we have talked about the problem specification so now it's time to understand what are the functional requirements for the lost and found DAICD so basically in software engineering a functional requirement defines a function of a system or its component a typical functional requirement will contain a unique name and number and a brief summary this information is used to help the reader to understand why the requirement is needed and to track the requirement through the development of the system so what will be the first requirement of lost and found system of course it's going to be a login login contains registrations as well as the login part so first requirement functional requirement what we are having is the sign up using the webmail username whenever you are going to register our system will allow to enter into our system with your username which is already given to you by the college secondly sign in using the webmail username whenever you are going to sign for the next time your student id which is your the webmail username you have to just provide and you will be allowed to enter in the system and access the system so it also allows the authentication part of the student whether the student is authenticated or not so we are doing it by sending a verification mail to the system where whenever student provides a username and the password to the system our second functional requirement is log complaint for lost item which includes adding up a complaint, review complaint, edit complaint, deleting a complaint and the claim for the item. 2.1 is add lost item complaint. Whenever student lost something, he or she is going to add the complaint to our system that I have lost this item. We have added one functionality which is the student can add the complaint category wise like I have lost my phone charger so I'm going to add that complaint in the electronics category all right 2.2 is the review of the complaint after you have added your complaint you are going to review it like anyone has the claim that yeah I got this item or not that will be basically in the review complaint 2.3 is added to your complaint say for example you want to add something more you want to add the color of an item so this always option is available to you that anytime you can edit your complaint 2.4 is remove complaint whenever you got your item back you can easily remove the complaint or delete a complaint 2.5 claim item basically you have lost something right so you are going to check for the available items or the found items once you found that yeah this item might belongs to me you are going to claim that item so that covers 2.5 which is a claim item basically user of our system or student of our system will be either loser or finder once i found somebody's item i become the finder so our third functional requirement will be dependent on the finder which is submit found items once i found somebody's item i'm going to add that yeah i have found this item with the details of the item it may be the color it may be the name it might be the photo too that yeah i'm going to click this photo and i'm going to upload it so that loser can easily find it out and 3.2 is edit item it, there are always updation can be possible so we have added edit item like i can add color i can i want to add the image later on so i can do the same 3.3 is remove item once i have hand over the item to the loser i'm going to delete or remove the item 3.4 is all about the accepting the claims right as we talk about the loser loser is going to check for the found items and loser is going to claim for the same so it's duty of the founder to whether accept the claims or to reject the claims once founder accept the claims the contact details of the founder will be allowed to seen by the loser so it's all about the 3.4 accepting the claims so now we have talked about the functional requirements of the lost and found DICT. 
we have seen what are the functional requirements and the non-functional requirements of the lost and found system. So now we can go forward for the analysis part. For analyzing our whole system, we are required to have UML diagrams for the proper or the better understanding of the system. The first UML diagram is the use case diagram. So what is use case diagram? A use case diagram at its simplest is a representation of a user's interaction with the system that shows the relationship between the user and the different use cases in the user is involved. So basically use case diagram is depending on the three major things. First is the actor. The actor can be human user, some internal applications or maybe some external application. Second is the functionalities. Functionality is to be represented as an use case. It is represented as the oval shape. Third, relationships among the use cases and the actors. Basically, there are three kind of relationship is possible. First is the include relationship. Second is the extend relationship. And the third is the generalized relationship. So let's look at the lost and found systems use case diagram. We are having the four major actors, which is the first is SVG or the system admin. SVG is the student body government of the whole DI city. So this is the body or this is might be the system admin, which is a person we are communicating or the managing the whole lost and found system. Second is the main system. Mail system is an external application. But still why we are adding the mail system because we are going to communicate with the mail system and we require to communicate with the mail system so that we can authenticate a student. Third is losser and the fourth is finder. So basically either losser or finder will be a student. So student at a particular time will be a losser or finder. So that was we have separated both losser and the finder. Let's look at the functionalities which is in the oval shape. These are the more uh, core functionalities of the lost and found system. First is logging, registration, manage system, manage lost complaint, manage found items, view found items, claim item and contact finder, view lost items, contact owner and store student ID. So let's look at the first of our functional requirements or the first use case which is the logging. So how we are going to make a use case? Basically, you have already developed what are the functional requirements of our system, particular system, right? So you are going to, you know, club that with, yeah, first functional requirement of the lost and found is logging. So now I have to add use case of the login. I have to add that functionality. So what login will contain? Login includes the registration as well as the login. So we have added that as extend. Extend is a basically an any optional thing like for logging if you have already registered you are not going to register for the twice or thrice so extend shows that registration is an optional part once you have signed up second is the managed system as SVG is communicating with the managed system SVG is responsible for managing the whole system which includes what manage lost complaint manage found items so at particular time the lost complaint will be managed by the losser while the find or the found items will be managed by the finder it is represented as the include relationship which means that manage system includes two parts which is the losting complaint managing and the found items managing let's look at the view found item use case as I have lost something, of course, I'm going to see the list of the found items. Like, yeah, whether my item is belonging to it or not, whether somebody has found my item or not. So that comes under the view found items, which extend claim item and the contact finder. So once I see, yeah, my item is there or my item cannot be there. So why it is extend? Because it is optional thing. You can claim item, which is completely optional thing you cannot even claim to so even you claim or even you contact that is the op optional thing so we have added it as the extend 
view lost items let's look at the use case view lost item finder is communicating with the view lost items i have found somebody's item and i didn't get any claim for it so i want to give it back to the particular or the authorized person so i'm going to view the lost item which includes that i'm going to contact the owner and the store the student id once i give the particular thing to back to the person it's my responsibility to add the student id of that person so that it is easy for us to verify in the future like yeah this item will be hand over to the particular person which is having the student id as so and so so this is all about our the use case diagram next is use case description what is use case description it is basically textual representation of any use case to make a use case description you have to select one particular use case and there will be a total detailed analysis of that particular use case in the use case description so let's look at our use case description as we have seen we will be having the nine use cases in the use case diagram but for the sake of understanding use case description better way we have selected one use case description which is the manage system and we are going to talk about the, all the details which should be covered in the use case description so what are the fields a use case description should have let's talk about that first use case name brief description primary actor secondary actor dependency generalization basic flow alternate flow precondition post condition extension variation and special requirements first is use case name use case name is which we have given in the use case diagram say for example if i'm making the use case description of the managed system what name i have given there was the managed system so i'm going to write it over here that managed system is a use case name second is brief description here I, we have to write one or two line explaining what the functionality this use case is performing third primary actor what is primary actor primary actor is an actor which is directly communicating with this use case so here the svg is directly communicating with the managed system secondary actor secondary actor is that who is not directly communicating but somehow there is a communication link between that use case and the actor so a loser finder and the system admin will be our secondary actor dependency dependency implies that is there any use cases being included or excluded from this use case so here in our case of course manage lost complaint and manage found item these two use cases are being included in the managed system so we'll add it over here generalization is not here so we are going to write null in that case so flow of events basic flow once i have selected or once i have no yeah this is going to be a use case functionality so what are the step or what are the flows in which the you know actual functionality is going to perform that will be going to in the basic flow step first is that svg starts managing system as a whole right second is loser and svg both are able to log lost complaint of course svg can have all the rights to communicate with the system or the right to access the system and same for the loser loser can add the lost complaints as a loser and svg both can edit the complaint since we have given all the rights to the svg we are not going to talk about more to the svg let's focus on the loser and the finder what activities they can perform loser is able to see found items category wise and also add lost item category wise categories categories can be any like books cell phones keys jewelry wallets and many more fifth is loser will be able to review complaints and claim it yeah loser can of course claim for the found items and it can also review that complaints 
finder will add record for the found item everyone will be able to see that and also can search category wise too finder and losser can contact each other through our system after contact if losser get his or her stuff back losser delete that complaint and finder will add student id of the owner whom he has given the stuff back so it's all about the basic flow now let's move on to the alternate flow what is alternate flow once we are going in sequence in the basic flow is there any possible switching is there any possible uh, other way to go so here 1.1 as we have talked in one as we start managing system as whole so alternate flow of that is that ki other than svg losser and finder can also interact with the system all right so whenever we you know losser or finder going to add anything there will be always a chance of fake complaint right so 8.1 indicates that admin can delete invalid lost item as well as the invalid found item what is the precondition precondition is that before you know executing this functionality any additional or any additional requirement is needed for it so yeah for performing or for managing and doing all this stuff what you require student should have webmail id already registered and login should be correct for the verification what is the post condition post condition is basically after doing all these things what will be the state or what will be the later on situation of the system after performing all this finder should add student id and loser will get his or stuff back what is extension extension here you have to write is from the managed system any extend use case is there so no so here we write null variation variation includes what can be the functionalities first is the managed lost complaint which includes four core functionalities second is the managed found complaints uh, which include the four main functionalities let's talk about the special requirements special requirements are those which is something adding to our system which is you know extra to our system or the additional functionality which is performing first is call or sms using system from loser to the finder and the vice versa our system is providing the functionality that using our system you can directly call or sms to the person that yeah i want to know about this stuff i want to know about my lost item or the found item secondly finder can upload photograph of found item using our system once i have found somebody's item it would be of course better to upload the photograph so that the loser can easily find it out so it's all about the detail use case description what a use case description should have after the use case and use case description i would like to explain activity diagram Activity diagram is another important diagram in UML to describe dynamic aspect of the system. Activity diagram is basically a flow chart to represent the flow. Activity can be described as a operation of the system. After the basic idea of the activity diagram, let's move on to the managed system activity diagram. First, there is the initial node which shows the starting of the activity diagram. After the initial node, there is a check session. which check the session of the login if user was not logging into the system then it will redirect into the login activity there is a sub activity symbol which shows that there is another expansion of the login activity then if user is already logging into the system then there is another decision node which check the type of the user if user type is sbg or admin then there is one decision box which divide flow into the two path which is manage found item activity and manage lost complaint activity there is another two sub activity symbol in that two activity which shows the expansion of manage found item activity and manage lost complaint activity in these two activity there are basic crud operation like add update delete are there then there is a merge node which combined that two flow then there is a final node which shows the end of the managed system activity after the activity diagram i would like to explain sequence diagram sequence diagram is fall down into the interaction diagram category the purpose of interaction diagram
can be described as one to capture dynamic behavior of a system second to describe message flow in the system third to describe structure organization of the object fourth to describe interaction among objects now let's see the element of the sequence diagram that is frame lifeline activation message guard combined frames like alter option and loop using this element we can make sequence diagram now after getting basic idea about sequence diagram let's move on to the manage system sequence diagram to make sequence diagram first of all we have to identify the actor boundary object controller and entity in our manage system sequence diagram actor is a admin or sbg complaint page is the boundary object complaint controller is a controller and database is the entity so user can uh, interact with the boundary object boundary object will interact with the controller and controller will interact with the entity in this sequence diagram admin can do the crud operation like addition update delete admin can add complaint by add complaint method and its parameter which is item details after the adding the complaint system will give the acknowledgement message to the admin it can be positive or negative if admin want to update detail then first he have to view the complaint then he can do update operation on that admin can view complaint by view complaint method the admin can perform update operation by update complaint method which its parameter item details same like update if admin want to delete complaint then first he have to view the complaint then he can perform delete operation on that admin can view complaint by view complaint method the admin can perform delete operation by delete complaint method with its parameter complaint id hey there i am joyno and i will show how to make analysis class diagram which is also known as analysis modeling first we need to identify domain objects for each use case in our system like entity control boundary we usually identify those objects from the sequence diagram let's look at one example here we have a item class which is inherited by a lost complaint and a found item class as we see a sequence diagram of the managed lost complaint we identify there are some methods like add lost complaint remove lost complaint edit lost complaint and so on so we identify those methods and add them into a lost complaint class are using a attribute we had so we generalize after identifying objects method and attribute we need to identify a relationship and a multiplicity between those objects like user and registration class c a one user can register only once in a system so we identify with a one to one multiplicity so now we know how to make analysis class modeling let's look at our systems class model we have a user class which is inherited by a student and a system admin class a user class has a shared attribute which is user id username password a wing room number email id and a phone number a second class we have is login one user can log in into a system a multiple times so it derived a same attribute from the user class which is user id and a password then we have a registration class which is consist of details which is type of user class and it is related to a student class which is one to one relationship a student one student can register 
only once in our system. Then after we have a item class which is also inherited by a lost complaint and a found item class. It has a shared attribute like name, description, color, category, place, date, user id and an item type. We have another two classes which is found claim and a lost claim. A one lost complaint can have a multiple found claim. Why? A one found item can be have a lost complaint. After doing analysis class modeling, let's look at OCL. What is OCL? OCL stands for Object Constraint Language, which is declarative language for describing rules that apply to UML models. So let's look at a constraint for our system, which is lost and found. Though our system is for DIICT, basic constraint is that user must be a student of DIICT which can be checked with a student ID. Second, we provide the login with the student ID and the password. So user must be authenticated via webmail which is sent by the system. Third, in our system we have listed down possible places of the DIST campus. So found item place must be exist. A fourth, in lost and found system to identify item type, we gave it an item type. It must be L or F, where L stands for lost item and F stands for found item. Fifth, we student is adding item into system. It must be provide the item brief description. A sixth, as to contact the owner or the losser. We took a mobile number of the owner or the losser, which should be a unique 10 digit number. Seventh, to prevent a wrong entry, we took the date and time of the item found or the lost item. So there can be a valid complaints only in our system. Eighth, at a time of registration, we sent one link to a student's webmail, which contains a code that actives a user. Ninth, most basic login should be done to those who are registered and active users only. Tenth, to prevent a multiple registration, user can register only once in a system. After object constraint language, I would like to explain state model diagram. The name of the diagram itself tells the purpose of the diagram and other details. It describes different state of object in a system. The states are specific to a component or object of a system. The purpose of a state diagram is used to model dynamic nature of the system. They define different state of the object during its lifetime. And these state are changed by event. We can make state model using sequence diagram or our object constraint language OCL. So as per our project, we choose sequence diagram method to model state diagram. After the getting basic idea about state diagram, let's move on to the manage system state diagram. In manage system state diagram, there is first initial node. Then there is a first state which is ideal state. After the viewing complaint method call, it goes to S1 state. Then after S1 state, there is a decision node, which decides the path by different method like add complaint, update complaint, delete complaint. If admin choose add complaint, then it goes to S2 state. Then admin take update complaint, then it goes to S3 state. If admin choose delete complaint, it goes to S4 state. Now there is a merge node at there which combine all three parts and goes to a final node which indicate end of manage system state model. Hello, I'm Shreya. I'm going to talk about the UML diagram which is package diagram. A package is a grouping of model elements. 
A package can contain model elements of different kinds, including other packages to create hierarchies. A package defines a namespace for its contents. Packages can be used for various purposes. Each contain element has a visibility relative to the containing package. A public element is visible to elements outside the package and which is denoted by plus sign. A protected element is visible only to elements within the inheriting packages and it is denoted by hash. A private element is not visible at all to elements outside the package and it is denoted by minus. Basically when to use package diagrams to create an overview of a large set of model elements to organize a large model to group related elements to separate namespaces while making package diagram what are the tips to be considered so first of all gather model elements with strong cohesion in one package keep model elements with low coupling in different packages Minimize relationships, especially associations between model elements in different packages. So this is all about the package diagram. So now let's look at the lost and found DICT package diagram. Basically we have made three packages for our system. First package of our system is log management. Log management includes models as login and registration. So any activity before entering to our system will be handled over into log management package. Second package is user management. It's basically related to the activities or the domain of user. User includes the student and the system admin, which is SVG. Third package is item management. It includes models as item, found complaint, lost complaint, found item, and lost complaint. So anything related to the item we have clubbed into one unit and given a name as item management. So it is all about the package of our system. Now let's look at design pattern. Design pattern represents best practice used by experienced object oriented software developers. Design patterns are solution to general problems that software developers found during software development. In our lost and found system, we try to figure out some basic design patterns that mostly commonly use. First, singleton pattern. In our system, we have created a one database connection class that will return an instance of a class. And if there is no instance of that, then it will create a one instance and it return it. See in an example, there is lost and found system and there is one database helper class. It has an instance type of single object and it has a method single object get instant and show message a guest instant message a get instant method will return a single object if there is no object created it will create object and it will return second MVC design pattern MVC stands for model view and control this is used to separate applications concern. Model. Model represents an object. It also has logic to update controller if the data changes. View. View represents a visualization of the data that model contains. Controller. Controller acts on both model and view. It controls the data flow into a model object and updates the view whenever a data changes. It keeps view and model separate. Let's look at example. We have a registration controller which contains model and view. It has a method registration controller, set user details, get user details, and update view. We have a registration model which contains a details, which is type of user. It has a method of receive detail, validate detail send mail and add users which returns a boolean method a registration controller also has a registration page which will show a student detail and which will show a view of a page